So if you're new to computers and you've been wanting to build your very first PC, then this video is gonna be perfect for you. I've been wanting to do this video series for a while now, kind of an intro to computer hardware. And today's video, we're gonna start off with the motherboard. To me, the motherboard is kind of like the backbone of the computer. Everything connects to it, all the way from your CPU, your RAM, your power supply, your video card, SSDs, hard drives, everything. Pretty much anything that goes inside of your computer or that you will use will connect to your motherboard at some point. So what I wanna to do today is go over the motherboard, pretty much break it down part by part, section by section, show you where everything connects so that you get a better understanding of how the computer works and the purpose of each port on your motherboard. What's up guys, it's Jason from Tech Rated. On this channel, I do a lot of computer builds, software tutorials, tech reviews, things like that. So after this video, if that seems like something that you're interested in, go ahead and check out the rest of my channel and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future content. Now with computer parts, there's always something new being released. So it's very important that you understand how motherboards work and how to buy and purchase the right motherboard. And we'll go over that briefly today also. The first thing that I wanna discuss are the different sizes of motherboards that you have. Now, these motherboards are gonna offer more features or less features depending on what all they can fit on the PCB or the printed circuit board, the motherboard itself. So if you have a much smaller motherboard, um, you're gonna have less, obviously less PCI Express slots. You may have less memory slots, but there are several different sizes that you can choose from based on the type of build that you want to complete. So you have mini ITX. Now this is gonna be the smallest one designed for very compact builds and cases. Typically this is only has like a single PCI Express slot, meaning that you can only fit one graphics card. Then you have micro ATX. Now this is smaller than your standard motherboard, but has more features and expand and it has more expansion slots than a mini ITX board. Then you have your ATX board. Now this is an ATX board, so it's kind of got pretty much everything that you need built into it. It's the standard motherboard size. It fits in most PC cases. It has multiple PCI Express slots. It has M.2 slots, plenty of room for SSDs, SATA connectors, and it will fit in a full tower case. So depending again, you may be looking at a smaller case, then you may have to buy a smaller motherboard. So you also wanna make sure that when you buy your case, that you can fit the motherboard you want inside of that case and vice versa. So that's very important also. And then one that you also have the extended ATX motherboard. Now this is mostly for your high end CPUs like Intel's Extreme Series and things like that. And oftentimes they'll have multiple uh, channels of memory and like memory slots on both sides of the CPU and a lot more to offer as far as features and components and things like that. So you will need a much larger case to fit it. So the first thing and probably the most important component of the motherboard is gonna be the CPU socket. Now this is going to be where your CPU goes or your central processing unit. Now, depending on which motherboard you have, whether it's an AMD based motherboard or an Intel based motherboard, the socket may look a little bit different. And that's something we can talk about more in depth in another video. If you all think that this is something that you would want to uh, watch or another video that you would be interested in going a little bit deeper dive into the motherboard. But as far as this goes, we're just going to keep it real simple. Now, this happens to be an Intel based motherboard. It's a Maximus 8 Asus ROG. Uh, Asus ROG Maximus 8 motherboard. It is a bad motherboard. It's something that I've had for several years now. It was in my son's computer. We replaced his motherboard with a Ryzen 3600 and uh, an AMD type motherboard. So if that's a video that you would like to see, you can go and check that out. I'll link that here. Now the latches will be different depending on again, whether it's Intel or AMD. So this being an Intel type socket, you can tell it's got this retention latch here that you lift up. Now, I will show you exactly how the CPU is installed, but I'm not gonna go you know, too in depth on how it works. We're just gonna make it real quick. But you would literally just drop it into the slot and you know, being very careful not to damage any of the pins and then you would slide the latch and then lock it into place. Now the CPU or the central processing unit is often considered basically the brain of the computer. So it's where all information goes, whether it's being input or output of the system. So basically that is the CPU socket. Now the next things we're gonna discuss is basically your RAM slots. Now these are right here, right next to the CPU. Um, they do place them differently on different motherboards. So I've got another motherboard here I will show you, but we do have four of those here. Now these are DDR4 slots, memory slots. So depending again, what kind of system you're building, if you're building anything in 2020, you're not gonna go anything uh, older than DDR4 slots but just to show you a compatibility type thing, this is DDR3 memory and it will not fit into this motherboard. You can see that there is a notch on the memory right there. Kind of zoom in on that, see if I can get it to focus. But you do have a notch right there on the, on the memory and it has to line up with these slots on the 
on the slots on the motherboard and you can tell here that it does not line up it will not fit so again when you purchase your memory you want to make sure that it is compatible with your motherboard now here is another one that i have i'll just kind of let you see these side by side we do have another older much older motherboard here this is probably a computer i built about six or eight years ago uh, you can tell it's an intel socket it looks very similar to this one here but you can see the processor is a little bit larger and instead of only having four slots here for memory we have six here so a little bit different type motherboard so again you just want to make sure that everything is compatible when you purchase it so the next thing we're going to discuss is going to be the pci express slots now you've got several on this motherboard depending on the motherboard you have purchased or are going to purchase you may have a different amount of these pci express slots but you will notice that we do have shorter ones here here and here compared to the longer ones that are here here and here now the longer ones are going to be more for your sound card your network card most importantly your video card things like that your shorter ones nowadays can also fit some of those same cards except for your video card now your video card is always going to go if you only have one you're always going to install it in the very topmost pci express slot that is the longer slot so if you want to break these down and get a little bit more detailed these are your PCI Express X16, and then you have your PCI Express X1. So you're always going to install your video card on the topmost PCI Express X16 slot. So this would be where your graphics card would go. Now here we do have an M.2 slot for your M.2 SSDs. Now again, depending on the motherboard, it may be a little bit different. Uh, the one that I'm currently using has another slot up here for another M.2 slot for an SSD. This particular motherboard comes with this cover for the aesthetic purpose to kind of cover up some of that stuff so you don't have to see it. If you purchase one that does not include that shielding, then it's pretty much going to be open and you can install your M.2 SSD straight onto the motherboard. You won't have to remove any type of, you know, housing or shielding whatsoever. Now, this is something else we'll come back to in a minute, but this is the chipset and we'll discuss it in a second. But since we're on the point of SSDs and storage and all of that stuff, you do have several connectors that, that again depending on your motherboard where they may be located but this is going to be your SATA ports or SATA ports depending on how you pronounce it but this is going to be where you will connect your hard drives whether it be a mechanical hard drive or your SSD with a SATA cable and uh, you know you've got several here so you can connect several different hard drives to your computer now if you are brand new to building computers or this is your first computer and you're just wanting to get to know your motherboard a little bit better you can actually take a look around the motherboard itself on the pcb which is the printed circuit board and there's actually labels for each one of these connectors or slots that will tell you what every component is and you can also match that up with your motherboard manual and it will kind of guide you and let you know what all of this stuff is but I'm going to try and point out the most important things that we use on a regular basis when building a computer. So right on the side, and keep in mind, throughout this whole video, I may say it several times, but it's very important that you guys understand that this motherboard may be a little bit different from yours. So you may find some of these pieces or parts, connectors in different locations. So this is going to be your USB 3.0 header. So this is going to be where you would connect the cable that runs inside of your computer case to this header. And then it would run basically to the front of your computer. Now the next thing that I will discuss is going to be your power connector. And that's going to be where you will connect your power supply to your computer. That is going to be right here. Now for most cases today, you're gonna to have a 24 pin power connector. So it's gonna provide power to the motherboard. You also have, depending on, again on the motherboard, uh, let's see if I can get a good angle here of that. You may have several different pins up here. So this one in particular is an eight pin. You may have a four pin, six pin, eight pin, but this is gonna be the additional power connector that you will use to connect your processor. So that's where you would run that cable so that you would be able to supply the power required for your processor to work properly so you do not have any type of issues with crashing or anything like that, especially if you plan to overclock your CPU. Now all over the motherboard, you have several different connection points. They are called headers. Uh, they connect various things to your motherboard. We have several fan headers right in this area and they will be for your processor. So whether it will be for your all-in-one pump or if it's just gonna be a sensor specifically for your fan speed so it can detect your fan speed, things like that. You also have case fan headers that are placed basically all around the motherboard. So there's one right up here, there is one here, and then there's gonna be a few at the bottom. But basically those are gonna be your headers that you will connect your fans to so that you can cool your system. 
Now at the bottom you have several other headers. So this header here will be what you will connect your front audio to. So your headphone jack and your microphone port. Uh, those will there will be a cable that is connected inside of your case. It will run to this to this set of pins here, and that will be how you connect your front microphone and headphone jack. This header with the white plastic outline is gonna be your RGB header. So it's gonna be what you would use to connect your RGB controller or your fan controller to that may have RGB. Those would go right here. So we also have a whole section down here at the bottom that have other headers also. Now some of these you may not really use just depending on some of the things that you're gonna have inside of your system, but you have USB headers here at the bottom. So if you have like a case that has USB 2.0 on the front, you would connect those. You also have your front panel connectors. Now this is gonna be where you connect your power button, your reset switch and all of that. Uh, it will also have those labeled right here on the PCB. Now a few other things that I'm gonna mention um, may or may not be again on your motherboard depending on what kind of motherboard you have. And that will be like say an LCD panel here that kind of gives you air code readouts. Um, a lot of motherboards do have these things here. So like if you get some type of issue with your motherboard, it will give you some type of number output here. And then you can go look it up in your motherboard and it will basically identify, help you diagnose the problem that you're having with your motherboard. And then uh, again, a lot of motherboards do have these power buttons. So this is a power button and a reset switch. So you can use this to power your computer or reset it if for whatever reason you cannot get your computer case connected correctly or if you're just doing some type of troubleshooting or trying to diagnose some issues, you can use those two buttons there. Another component that seems to get overlooked quite often, and it's basically because you don't really have to worry about it for the life of your motherboard, is gonna be your CMOS battery. Now mine is right here under that shroud. So the CMOS battery, what it does is it allows your system to keep the date, the correct date and time, even if you disconnect the power from your computer. So let's just say you need to disconnect the power cable to do some cleaning or to do some type of update or upgrade to your system. Then when you disconnect your power, if this battery is dead and then you connect everything back up and boot your system, you're gonna be brought up. Your system will boot up with the wrong date, incorrect date and time. So this battery puts off a little, very little charge and it allows your system to keep that correct date and time even if you have it disconnected for any reason, like I said, to do some type of upgrade or to clean your system. Now I'm going to use this motherboard for this portion and we're because we're going to be discussing the voltage regulator module. Now a lot of those are going to be right here wrapped around the processor. They basically provide the power you need to your processor to do any type of overclocking and things like that. So when you buy your motherboard, you want to make sure that you got good reviews and a lot of people say good things about the VRM, especially if you plan to overclock. Okay, so going back to one of the components I mentioned earlier, we're going to discuss the chipset. Now the chipset, like I said earlier, does have to be able to talk and work well with the CPU. So there's gonna be different types of chipsets and they're gonna have different types of features. So if you're looking at some of the higher end Intel CPUs, they're gonna want, you're gonna to wanna to pair that with a higher end uh, Intel chipset. So that will allow you to overclock and do things like that and also provide you with a lot more features. Same with AMD. If you're looking at overclocking and, and uh, using a higher end, using a higher end AMD processor, then you're gonna to wanna to pair that with a higher end chipset. But if you're getting into the specifics of a chipset, uh, I can kind of bring this up here. Um, if you're taking a look at like say Intel, they have uh, several different types of chipsets still being used today. So they have their 300 series right now. So they have for their budget chipsets, you have the H370, the B360, and then you have their Z390, which is gonna be their high end. And then you have, again, like I said, the AMD socket, which is AM4. Now they're gonna have several different chipsets also. So they're gonna have their B350, B450 uh, chipsets. And then they also have like, say their X470. When you hear that, when you hear Z or X, that's gonna be the high end. Um, so if you're looking at an AMD chipset, the X, if you have anything X, it's gonna be, that's gonna be their high end chipset. And then you're gonna have their more budget friendly chipsets, which is gonna be B450, B350, and so on. And usually that just means that they have less options on the motherboard, so it may not offer Wi-Fi or the ability to overclock or things like that. Okay, so last but definitely not least is going to be the rear I.O. or the rear input-output ports on the back of the motherboard. Now, this is gonna vary based on your motherboard, but I'm gonna cover the ones that you'll probably have and that you'll probably use. You do have a couple buttons here for BIOS flashback if you need to do that for any reason, if you have any type of issues with your BIOS. 
You do have a couple of connectors here that you'll use for your Wi-Fi antennas. If you decide to use Wi-Fi instead of using an ethernet cable, which will plug in right here. This is your ethernet port for your ethernet cable. You have the blue ports here, which are gonna be your USB 3.0. Now you can at some point have uh, HDMI ports and um, display ports, but for the most part, you won't use those, especially if you're using a gaming PC or you're building a gaming PC where you have a video card and that's where you'll connect your monitor. And then underneath over here, you have some SATA ports, extra SATA ports, external SATA ports, a USB type C port. So on this particular motherboard, you have PS2 port for your older keyboards and your older mice. And then I have another couple extra USB 3.0 ports. And then right on the end up here, you have all of your sound outputs. So you have basically a lot of these different outputs here for surround sound if you wanted to plug like a surround sound system into it. You also have a pink input here for your microphone. And then you have this port here, which is gonna be your optical output for your sound also. So you could, you know, hook up a, a speaker to that or a surround sound system. All of these sound ports are pretty much aligned right here with the Supreme FX. All of the components that are underneath this shroud for the circuitry for the sound and all of that. So it's basically right in line with the ports here on the back. But again, your input output will vary based on your system or based on your motherboards. So if you happen to not know what some of the ports are, just refer to your motherboard manual and uh, it will definitely help you out with that. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about motherboards. If there's anything that I did not cover or something specific that you want to know about a motherboard or a specific motherboard, just go ahead and drop those in the comments below. So this is the very first video of my overall intro to hardware series where I'm going to talk about basically every component inside the computer and what it does and how to buy them and things like that. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like button so I know that you want to see more of these type of videos. But like I said, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I'll see you all in the next video.